welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Sacred Union Energy Update. When I said we would be back later this week, I didn't expect it to be this soon to be doing a Sacred Union Energy Update check-in. But like I said, energy is moving pretty swiftly um, and I got some new Oracle decks. So <laughs> I have to do a check-in. This is the Mystical Journey Oracle. Really excited to be using that. And we're going to be using the Kipper deck. Just got this one as well. A little early birthday present to myself. <laughs> if you would like to support this channel, I would really appreciate it. Your likes, your comments are super, super helpful. There are also other ways to support this channel and all the free collective work that I do down in the description box below. All right. Let's see. What is going on for the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine? Divine Feminine is feeling pretty spicy today. Um, not quite sure what's going on with the Divine Masculine yet. I feel like we're going to start with the Divine Feminine because she's feeling a little bit spicy. She is standing in her power and I feel like she's also recognizing where she had given that power away. She's recognizing where she had sacrificed herself, where she had become disempowered. Um, this connection really showed her that. It really showed her how to grow. It really showed her how to step into her true authentic self more and more and more. If she had been doing that self-development work in the past, it was showing her more like where the holes are. That's what I keep channeling. Your counterpart is meant to trigger you, not in a, a cruel way, not in like a negative fashion, but they are meant to show you where the holes are and fill it back up with love so that you can fill yourself back up with love. Now let's talk about that for a minute because I feel like people get the wrong idea. Um, I had channeled a couple of days ago and I posted this on my feed and I had shared this on the previous reading that you and your counterpart are teachers to each other. That's what you're here for. That's what you're meant for. Um, that's what this divine love is. You are here to help each other grow and learn and expand in the energy of love. The highest energy there is, is love in that energy of love and unconditional love. But throughout time on this planet, we have been so accustomed to just low vibrations, dense energy, love with conditions, um, relationship templates that were based on codependencies or attachments or whatever it was, whatever the wounding was, whatever the patterns were, it kept us really trapped in a system within ourselves that we didn't truly understand how to break free from. And Divine Counterparts, Twin Flames, Sacred Partners, whatever it is that you want to label it, you are here to understand what it is that unconditional love truly is. Um, you are love in its highest form, in, in its highest light, um, because these divine counterparts, it's a relationship with God. It's a, re it's a reflection of God's love. You are a reflection of God. And what you really come to understand on this journey is that they're reminding me of how in A Course in Miracles, it's known as a holy relationship. Um, and I mean, take that as it resonates for you. I only read a little bit of A Course in Miracles way back when I started my ascension journey. But that really struck a chord, that holy relationship, because it is a relationship with God. You connect closer and closer to yourself. You connect closer and closer to God. And that is what brings you closer and closer to your sacred partnership. Um, because it's all one and the same, early on in my channeling, they had showed me the three of pentacles as this trinity energy with God at the apex. And then there was you and your twin flame. And then they showed it to me. Well, it's not. we needed you to understand that, but that's not exactly quite right. What it is, is because they were showing it to me with the cards, they were saying it's this, this, and this. But they said that's still creating a separation, as you can see. Um, so they said it's more like this, but it's a merged energy, energy. It's a blended energy. And then to further explain that, they brought it forth as a three of cups. Um, it was this very specific um, card. And I think I can bring it up quickly here. It was the one cup pouring into the other two. And they said, this is what it's like. It's God's love that pours into you both. And from there, you are able to love one another. And that love then ripples out and expands to affect everything and everyone. Because we are all connected 
through that consciousness, through that oneness, we're all connected. We are unique threads in the tapestry of creation. But it's all one tapestry. It's all creation. That's what unity consciousness truly is. And so that's what we are doing here on this planet. Please tell me. <laughs> I bet you it's going to be like the last card. <laughs> Unless I missed it. It's going to be like the one at the top, right? All right. It's a really great image. Nope, I missed it. Okay. It's a really great image. It is, I, I'm pretty sure, 100, pretty 100% sure that this is the deck. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the Three of Cups. Three of Cups. And Three of Cups, traditionally in tarot, is joy and celebration and love and harmony and all that stuff. I think this is the card. This might be the card. But this is what it was. It was pouring into the one. Um, okay, so I had uh, had it backwards as I was describing it there, um, which is interesting because what I just said was it's the one cup pouring into the two, but this pouring into you and pouring into them as, as one, but it's actually this. It's... It's you both pouring into the one cup. Um, but this is this is the God source energy. It's like it's it's all one. When you have water and water and water, it's like the drop in the ocean. You can't find that one drop, that one specific drop, because it's so blended and merged and one. That one drop of water is what makes up the entire ocean. That is oneness. That is unity. That is God's creation. That is the universe. That is that oneness. That is union. And that's what they showed me. But you can't pour from an empty cup. And that's what we have been doing in the paradigm and the templates of the past, pouring from empty cups and looking to the other to fill us up, looking to the external to heal us and mend us. When it's truly, it's our connection to ourselves and to God. And our counterparts show us that aspect of ourselves. And sometimes when we are in our unhealed or unconscious states, we're not able to see that light or that light is too bright. We're not able to claim that for ourselves. We're not able to acknowledge our worth, our value. We see our imperfections, we see our flaws, we see our pain, we see our patterns. We're not able to see our beauty, our love. And that's where we look outside of ourselves externally for validation and confirmation. That's why we cling to external factors like finances and materialism, success, in order to benchmark ourselves and gauge our success. But it's all within. It's all within us. Everything that we have is within us. Even our support from the universe. Even guidance and encouragement. I was talking to a friend the other day and I said, you know what? If people end up leaving my channel or they're not clients anymore, then I've done my job. Then I've done my job. Because that's what I want for you. I always want you guys to communicate with me. I would love this community and I would love for you to keep me updated. But for you to acknowledge yourselves, that means I've done my job because I want you to be self-empowered. I want you to trust your own intuition. I want you to feel connected to yourself and to God's source. That's what I want for you. That's what my job is. It's not to keep you hooked it's not to keep you in a cycle or in a pattern. We're breaking free from that. And if you guys have uh, done readings with me, then you know that I always start off with you. That the reading is always starting off with you, even if it's about a relationship or somebody else. Because I always say that these relationships are meant to be a reflection of us. It's not about the other person. The other person can affect us, and be part of our lives, and that's why we want to understand and get readings and stuff. But it's about you. 
It's about you. It's about your journey and your growth and your self-empowerment. And so many of my clients have gone on to become healers or readers themselves. And I freaking love that for you guys. I love that. Because that shows me how you have grown through your journey and recognizing yourself. And that is what it is all about. The universe is limitless. It is by nature abundant. And so with that, we don't need to create competition. We don't need to pour from empty cups or take from other people's buckets. We just allow ourselves to grow and be who we truly are and love ourselves enough and value ourselves to recognize, hey, this is my path. And he or she is walking that path. And that's not going to affect me unless we walk along the same path for a little while. We are interconnected, by which I mean we are having shared experiences with other people. We have relationships with other people. That's what spiritual connections is all about. We have relationships with God, with ourselves, with other people. We have relationships with love, with money. We have relationships with the world, with our jobs, with our pets. Everything is about our connection and our relationship with other people or other things. How we relate. That's what a relationship is all about. It's how we relate, how we connect. But first and foremost, the thing that I always drive home is that it's about you and your connection to yourself. And that connection to yourself includes your connection to God, the universe, life source energy, whatever it is that you want to call it, whatever gives you that personal connection, that personal feeling. A lot of us have a lot of religious trauma. And so I can speak for myself, especially when I was sick with Lyme disease, I did not want to acknowledge God. And so I started talking to the universe, started writing little notes to the universe. And you know what? It helped. And I began to realize that that was God. But I wanted, I needed to disassociate. I wanted to disassociate because I was so angry and felt so betrayed and so abandoned by God during that illness because of the suffering and the struggle and the trauma that I experienced. But over the course of this work and through my ascension, I began to heal that connection and become more comfortable But it's just a name. It's what you feel inside. It's the love, the loving mother, father energy that you feel inside. It's that personal connection. And the deeper you connect with yourself, the more you know yourself, the more you know God. Not from an ego standpoint, but from a soul perspective. That is what we're here for. That is what divine counterparts are here for to reconnect to the energy of love, to understand and embody that universal love, God's source energy itself. That's what enlightenment is. That's what ascension is. It's the embodiment of love. It's the embodiment of God, of that divinity That's what bringing down the fifth dimensional consciousness or the higher level consciousness into the physical realm is all about. That's what the bridge of being human and spiritual is all about. We are the bridge. We are the new earth energy through our embodiment of love. They reminded me this is what Jesus and Mary were here to teach. This is what they were here to show us through their embodiment. And you can go even further back to Isis and Osiris. Go even further back to Hathor. It was all about embodiment. Embodiment of the divine. And what is the divine? It is love. But not love as we've known it. As we have 
corrupted it, as we have perversed it, it is love in its most pure essence, as we haven't known it before. And you and your divine counterpart are here to heal the separation, to understand that that is just an illusion, to trust in the sanctity of your very soul and what your intuition is telling you, to become the bridge. When I first began channeling, I channeled a phrase on this channel called the bridge of the heart. And what was being brought to me was that the feminine energy really exists in the higher chakras, right? The crown, the brow, the throat chakra, the masculine energy really resides in the lower three chakras, the root, the sacral, the solar plexus. And what happens is the feminine really brings that spiritual energy down. The masculine really grounds that energy but what happens is as you heal and as you merge and as you come together, especially with your internal union, because you have both energies within you, the masculine and the feminine, merging in one beautiful divine dance. What happens is this, the feminine brings that down, the masculine energy rises, and you meet on the bridge of the heart. That is what you are. You are the bridge. The 3D and the 5D, or higher consciousness and the physical plane. That is what ascension is. It is a shift into higher consciousness. And the more you shift into higher consciousness, you're still experiencing the physical world. You're just experiencing it in a very different frequency, a very different way. So these two counterparts, what I had recently channeled, it was a understanding, an intuitive understanding that I've known that I, I would even say to my divine counterpart as well um, but I didn't really anchor it in I didn't really understand it until I channeled this the divine masculine helps the divine feminine to understand the power of the mind he teaches her how to control and observe her thoughts without attachment and with freedom he teaches her how to balance the overflow of her emotions the divine feminine teaches the divine masculine to see beyond the intellect. She teaches him how to get in touch with and express his emotions. She shows him the strength and power of the heart. What's beautiful about this is that you have to heal your inner feminine and masculine first. And so it's for me, when I was activated to ascension with my divine masculine, I'd already been doing so much spiritual development and understanding and self-development I already had a couple of spiritual awakenings but I didn't understand it as far as the power of the mind I didn't understand what it meant to control my thoughts I didn't understand in a way that he did from that perspective I didn't understand what that truly meant that thoughts become things that you create your own reality. I had heard those phrases, of course, but I didn't embody it. I didn't know how to put that into practice yet. And meeting him just opened everything up to me. He taught me so much in that respect. And I began to understand that I was teaching him too. That was really hard for us. We had a, a kind of like a student-teacher dynamic um, where we just kept resisting each other, resisting that. That was my own stubbornness and ego. I don't want to be taught. I don't want to be taught. You don't have to teach me. And he was very much reflecting that too, very much experiencing the same. But once I just allowed myself to surrender to that, to see there's so much to learn from each other, it changed everything for me and just opened me up to more love. A lot of my resistance was I didn't feel like I was worthy. It was almost like I was putting him on a pedestal. I didn't feel like I was worthy of the things that he knew because he was teaching me so much. But I began to understand that I had value too and I had worth too and I had gifts too. And the more I opened up to my gifts, the more I began to understand what the feminine energy could bring. That the feminine energy brought an awareness of emotions, an expression of self, 
her intuitive gifts, her intuitive knowing. I didn't know that in the beginning. And so that's where I began to understand that the feminine, she really opens the masculine up too. She opens him up to love that he had never experienced before. That he might know love or think that he knows love, but it's a deeper level of love. It's a love of self. It's a love that comes from connecting to oneself. That comes from honoring oneself and allowing yourself to communicate and express that where you had once been suppressed, especially for male masculines who are not allowed in the society to express their emotions or show their emotions, not allowed to cry, not allowed to be upset. And so they just express that through rage, through anger, through violence. But the more conscious you become and the more you tap into the beauty of the feminine energy, the more you begin to understand that it's a beautiful balance between the masculine and the feminine. That's the divine dance. And There's not one that's more or less than. It is beautiful, equal partnership. It's beautiful. They're showing me twin flames throughout history, just standing side by side. They're showing me the masculine and the feminine. They're showing me, like I was saying, it's like Mary and Jesus and then Isis and Osiris. And they're showing me like back through history, just thousands and thousands and thousands of twin flames in the energetic realms. And what I'm seeing is, at the forefront, the apex, is the creator, is God. Because God is that masculine and feminine energy. That oneness. That is what we are. That is who we are. That is what we are here to embody. That love. Not the false God. Not the egoic God. Not even the religious God. That has been so corrupted. But the pure energy of love and creation, the mother and the father that gives birth to creation, that gives birth to this universe, that gives birth to us as souls. In sacred partnership, in sacred partnership you are always teachers to each other. Once you understand this, you are able to work together in harmonious connection to each other to grow and expand beyond any perceived limitation. This is love and union. This is the power of the divine masculine and the divine feminine in sacred partnership. The energies are two parts of the same whole with each bringing its own strengths to balance the polarities. As twins, you twins, you are divine mirrors of each other. And so... Once you work through the value and the worth and the insecurities and the fears, you begin to understand that that is the divine dance too. Um, It's like not only do you learn from each other and grow together without that resistance, but coming together in harmony, in partnership, in love. Once you do that, you begin to see that what one strength might be another's perceived weakness but it's not a weakness it's not a weakness especially when you're together and when you're supporting each other you grow to understand yourself I'll give you an example I'm very good at communicating I always have been I've always been a writer um, always been a communicator always have expressed myself my divine counterpart has struggled with that in the past at least that's his perception He is a beautiful poet. He's a beautiful communicator when he wants to be, when he believes in himself, when he speaks from the heart, when he doesn't get himself caught up in the mind. But that's where you balance each other out as well. That's where you help each other to become stronger in those perceived weaknesses. I have a lot of weaknesses that I can see as strengths in my divine counterpart. And he helps me to become stronger in those areas as well. That's what union is. That's what partnership is. That's what helping each other to grow and expand is all about. 
about shifting the perception of what you once experienced or what you once believed and learning and growing and changing. So I said this is first seen in inner union, the wholeness of the self, and then externally in a sacred relationship with another. If you're walking this path with your sacred partner in the physical form, you're experiencing this with each other directly through your journey of growth and expansion. This is sacred love. This is love as a union of souls. So you first experience that union, that wholeness within, the balancing of the polarities, your inner masculine, your inner feminine, where it had been repelling in the wounded state or the unconscious states. Now it's honoring each other and seeing each other and communicating, expressing that love to each other within. It's the feminine that's saying to her inner masculine, I feel safe with you. I trust you. I know you can take care of me. I know you can protect me. It's her inner masculine that's saying to her inner feminine, I know that you can be vulnerable and express yourself. And I love and honor that. And I hold space for that. I allow you to be. I rejoice in your being, in your flow, in your intuition, in your expression of self and love. When you experience that inner union, your inner masculine and inner feminine communicating that with each other, feeling that peace and oneness and home within yourself, that's when you experience that with your counterpart. Now they have to go through their own process and that's where the 3D gets a little bit mucky. That's where it gets a little bit confusing because Divine Feminines, you might be like, well, I'm feeling this. Where is it? Where is the external? But that's part of the process. And the more that you stand in your self-empowerment and say, I am going to honor myself. I'm going to love myself. I'm going to stay in my self-empowerment and allow myself to shine without that fear of suppression, without that fear of persecution, without that fear I'm just going to be my truest, most authentic self. Not as a perfect human, but recognizing at every given moment that I'm just trying to be my best and highest self. I'm doing my best and highest within the context of this journey, this life journey, this human journey. The more you just appreciate yourself and honor yourself, the more you are creating an entire world around you that reflects that back to you. It's interesting, when I said that the Divine Feminine is feeling a little bit spicy today, it's because she's feeling like, I'm not going to allow anybody to control me, to make decisions for me, to dishonor me, to allow me to mistrust myself. Yes, I want a spiritual warrior, a divine conscious masculine to step up and lead me, but they also have to honor me in equal reciprocity, to trust my intuition, to trust my inner knowing. Leading is not control. I'm not going to abandon myself, she says. I'm going to honor myself. She's just in this queen of swords kind of energy. Just really, really stepping up for herself. Just saying, you know what? That kind of relationship or connection or treatment that I accepted in the past, no more. And I don't care what that means. I don't care what that looks like. Because I am not going to dishonor myself anymore. I'm not going to sacrifice myself anymore. She is stepping into her full embodiment. And she's willing to cut out anything that doesn't honor that. It's a very interesting energy. Very self-empowered energy. Very spicy. Beware of the, uh, beware of the Divine Feminine and her full power. <laughs> if you're not ready for it, step aside. If you are not ready for it, step aside. 
She's not letting anything into anything because she has come so far. Her journey has been so difficult. We're not underestimating the Divine Masculine. We're speaking about the Divine Feminine right now. We know Divine Masculine has gone through it too, but I'm speaking on behalf of the Divine Feminines. She has been through a difficult journey. It has been an uphill battle to get to where she is. And she is not letting anything bring her back to where she was. Good for her. <laughs> Good for her. Okay. But that's unconditional love. That is unconditional love. And that's what the Divine Mashin is beginning to understand, I'm hearing. That's what the Divine Mashin is beginning to understand. I'm just getting this um, crown opening from the Divine Mashin that they're beginning to see this. Oh my gosh, she's willing to let me go. She's willing to let me go. But see it from a higher perspective. It's not from the wounded, abandoned state of the Divine Masculine. He's seeing this in awe. She's not willing to dishonor herself. And so she's willing to let me go from that place of love. She's willing to let me journey. They're bringing me to a couple of weeks ago. I had channeled the alchemist in a reading. I Don't even ask me where. I can't remember where it was. Um, we had talked about the, I think it was a soul saying. We talked about the alchemist. It's a parable really really well known by uh, Paulo Coelho and it's about this young man a shepherd named Santiago who goes on this adventure and part of that adventure is it's, it's a journey um, it's a spiritual journey is he meets this woman I think her name is Mariana no I can't remember um, he meets this woman and she says you know what I know that you have a journey to go on I love you go on your journey Go on your journey. I can't go with you. You've got to go on this journey for yourself. And um, she says, we'll meet again. Come back to me. Come back to me. This is the lifetime I'm hearing. This is the lifetime where you come back to each other. But Divine Mashin is still going on their journey just as you went on yours, Divine Feminine. And you can't go on their journey for them. And you can't sacrifice yourself and where you are on your journey for them. You can't fix it. You can't heal it. That's part of their self-discovery. You can just love. Because if you were doing all those things, then you would be dishonoring yourself and you would be dishonoring your masculine as well. Divine masculine is beginning to get this. Oh my gosh, she does love me. She's not abandoning me. She really does love me. She's doing the hardest thing that she's ever done, which is letting me go. Because I wasn't treating her right. I wasn't treating her as a divine conscious masculine should. And so she knew that it was time for me to walk my path and learn whatever it is that I need to learn, experience whatever it is I need to experience in order to be that person for her. That is what unconditional love truly is. Divine feminines, you don't always like your divine masculine. That's sometimes where the disconnect comes in. You don't always like your divine masculine, especially in their earthly plane. But you love them. You feel their energy. You understand who they are on the soul level. But you also have to respect yourself and accept that what is happening on the earthly plane is not matching what you're feeling energetically. And until it does, that's where we release. That's where we release the attachment. That's where we allow ourselves just to be open to love and keep choosing the path of peace and love and just love our, our, our masculines so deeply but also respect them enough to accept them as they are now. That doesn't mean we accept poor behavior. It doesn't mean that we accept you know, the lack of communication or the in and out, the inconsistency, the lack of presence or all the other painful things that we experience along this journey with our masculines as they trigger us. They trigger us to show us where the holes are so we can step further and further into who we are. Just like you trigger them to show them where their wounds are, where their patterns are. But more and more, and so you can stay in your divine essence, so you can continue to embody your self empowerment. A 
and you can't embody, truly embody love, especially love of self, if you are continuing to accept. Just poor connection. A connection that doesn't feel good, a connection that hurts. That's where you love yourself. And your divine masculine loves themselves, learning to love themselves. I feel the divine masculine kind of coming in and saying, I've been hurt too. My divine feminine has hurt me too. And that's where the trust grows again or has to be rebuilt. That's where the foundation has to be rebuilt. Because the Divine Feminine, she understands that the journey has been difficult for both. That's where forgiveness has to come in between the both of you. And that comes in with honest expression. Um, it's like, I'm, I'm seeing like a... I'm seeing like a mirror, but it's interesting because it's almost like they're showing me like a projection, like a, an old movie projection, like, you know, like from the thirties and stuff, like an old movie projection, but I'm seeing a mirror and it's almost like the divine masculine where they were hurt by the divine feminine. It's, and this is for the divine feminine to understand too. It was always projections that you were projecting onto each other. It was always past patterns and pains and it's like, it was reflecting back to you. So if you were in a previous relationship, then that projection, you were, you were kind of shooting it at your divine feminine or your divine masculine, and the mirror was being held up and shown back to you. That's where the triggering was. It wasn't either of you intentionally hurting each other. It was just where the old patterns were. It was just where the old wounds were. And... You didn't have that conscious awareness before to allow yourselves to fill it up with more love towards each other. There was that resistance. There was that abandonment energy. There was that attachment energy. You still had wounds to clear. Now you're at a stage in your journey where one phase has ended and a new one is beginning. And what's happening is now when there are triggers, you're filling it up with love. You're mending it with love. The needle and thread. You're mending it with love now. Rather than the projections. Rather than the blame. Rather than the mirror. You're seeing the mirror. And you're seeing where there needs to be more love. Where there needs to be more expression. Where there needs to be more honesty and appreciation. Rather than digging the hole deeper. You're filling the hole up with more love. I just keep seeing a needle and thread just mending, mending with love rather than pursuing that pain or persisting that pain. You're healing the wounded states and coming into more conscious states of being. And the more you do that within yourself, the more your counterpart reflects that back to you. More love, not less. All right. Let's get some cards, shall we? Let's do a quick reading. Just a quick update on where is the Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine. Whew, that was a lot. <laughs> that was intense. Okay. Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine. You guys, I don't apologize for the way I do my readings. This is just how I channel. All right. If you're new here, welcome. <laughs> Please do give a like and a comment if this is resonating with you. Um, that helps to extend the reach. I would love for this to reach more people. Um, I would love for our community to expand. So keep uh, keep giving it shares and, and some love. All right. I feel like this is for both of you. This might be an Ascension relationship reading, but... Um, the path, this is, yeah, it, even with the 22 number, this is the both of you. And what I'm actually seeing, it's almost like, it's really weird. So we have this like open 
openness here. But what I'm actually seeing is this drawing together. It's almost like these are feminine and masculine energies. And it's like it's drawing closer together. It's bridging the gap. It's bridging the gap. The path is closing between you guys. Where it felt like there was such a distance, energetic or otherwise. It's like, I'm, I'm actually seeing it's like, what I'm seeing is like new seeds being planted. Where there was just like, um... They're giving me the word deforestation. So this is an interesting analogy. It's almost like where it felt like, it's a metaphor. <laughs> it's almost like where um, it felt like everything was cut down and everything's barren and empty now. Like it feels like there's such lack in the connection and disconnect in the connection. And you're wondering if it's even real, if it's even there. Um, new seeds had to be planted. New seeds had to be planted. What I'm actually seeing is the blooming, the blossoming of those new trees now and what it's creating is just new like a new ecosystem you're creating a new ecosystem which is this new earth which is this new template of relationship and love um it's like throw out the old throw out the old of what you knew and just be in the energy of love and loving towards each other now that comes with a, a sense of practicality you know, it comes with it. What is a healthy relationship? Well, what is it that you want it to be? That's where you work with each other. That's where you communicate with each other. That's where you help each other to grow and expand within the partnership, within the relationship. You've done so much individual work and growth. It's like now it's about the partnership and the relationship. Um, and that's what I feel like. I feel like you're bridging the gap between you guys. And it's like what's created is this beautiful, lush, new forest where it was just barren landscape before as always take this for your inner masculine and feminine take this for your masculine as you know your masculine or take this for a conscious masculine energy that you might not know that might be coming in take it as it resonates for you we're all on a little bit of different paths and not everything is quite revealed just yet just keep trusting in your heart keep opening your heart and keep choosing that path of love and peace to my masculine please what do we need to know for the Divine Masculine? What do we need to know for the Divine Masculine? I'm also getting with all this blue energy here. It's this, it's this throat chakra. Um, communication is going to help bridge that gap and create that new foundation. It's going to plant those new seeds. So communication, expression, especially in the energy of honesty and love. Um, and forgiveness, that compassion towards each other. Because you have so much love for each other. Why don't you want to express it? That's where I'm hearing, what, why don't you want to express it? Why don't you want to communicate? Why don't you want to forgive each other? Why don't you want to create something new? But that comes from acknowledging the past and allowing yourself to move forward, allowing yourself to communicate, allowing yourself to express in the energy of love. That's what's going to bridge the gap here and create this new lush relationship, connection. Forestry of emotions is what I just heard. A forestry of emotions. All right. Spirit, tell me about the divine masculine, please. Tell me about the divine masculine. Tell me about the divine masculine. Rebirth? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And divine feminine, taking back your power. This is, see, if you guys are skipping ahead to the reading, I'm going to put a timestamp for the reading below, but do make sure that you are checking out the whole whole first half of the video the first half of the reading because when I hit record that's my cue to start channeling and even though it share I share experiences or it's all channeling it's all stuff that spirits wants to relay um and the way that I read the way that I channel it's through stories it's through experiences um because that shows how connected we all are that's what I'm feeling. This is exactly what we've been talking about. So the Divine Masculine going through this rebirth, and it's like their heart has been ripped open. Their heart, like their their whole, it's like their chest, that guard that they had over their chest to guard their heart just ripped right open. And this is them being vulnerable, allowing themselves to be vulnerable, allowing themselves to be intimate with themselves and to learn how to be intimate with another. Intimacy is love. It's just the fear of intimacy, the fear of committing to yourself, to God, to whatever. It's that fear of intimacy that holds you back. This divine mansion is really beginning to understand that. 
really beginning to feel into their heart space and and wanting to express the fullness of their heart because this divine mansion is so sensitive and is so loving. Their heart is so full. They just had to shut it down because they didn't have anywhere to go with it. I'm hearing black sheep. This divine mansion was really a black sheep. They didn't know where to go with that love and that fullness and that, that beauty and that, that desire that they have for life and the universe, the magic that they hold within. And so they shut their heart down. And because they shut their heart down, they got too much in their mind space. They got too much in their spiritual ego. The divine feminine opened them up to understanding their heart. And that's where they're going through now. They're going through a rebirth. And part of that rebirth is to recognize and honor the divine feminine. Not just you as a divine feminine, but the divine feminine goddess. Again, mother, father, God. To recognize that mother God is part of the equation. Mother God is part of that oneness too. To recognize this and to honor this, especially within themselves. Divine Feminine, taking back your power. This is that self-empowerment that we were channeling. This is that blossoming. This is that spiciness too. Where she is saying, I am not going to dishonor myself. I am not going to abandon myself. I am not going to hold myself back like I had been. This is her claiming herself and her life and her journey and her love. And Divine Feminine doesn't hold it all in when she claims her power and takes her power back it's not like it's not like the miserly four of pentacles energy I, this is all my power i'm not going to give any to you she's not like that divine feminine in her full empress energy she knows how to give without sacrifice she knows how to nurture without overgiving she knows how to love without abandoning herself she has reached that place of balance. That's what taking back her power is all about here. Okay, let's get some more cards. I'm really excited to be using these. All right, Divine Masculine. How's the Divine Masculine... How is the Divine Masculine experiencing this connection right now? How are they experiencing this connection right now? Change. Yes, there's that rebirth. And nine, this September energy has been crucial. Um, we're already beginning to feel this. Uh, if you haven't checked it out already, make sure that you're checking out the September channeling on my Patreon. It is free and available to the public for the month of September. All of my readings are free and available to the public for September um, as part of like my birthday thank you giveaway. Um, so make sure that you are checking out September's content over on the Patreon. I will also have the September channeling on my social media feeds. Um, sometime in the next week or so because I do want that to get out and to be shared. A lot of um, ascension energies, a lot of energies with regards to the supportive cosmic energy coming through. We have the 99 portal, we have Mercury retrograde which is actually a supportive energy bringing more balance and we have the full moon in Pisces which is getting us really in touch with our emotions. So over the next week it might be a little bit emotionally rocky um, but that's only because it's clearing out anything that is not stable. It's creating actually more stability. And I feel like with this change and with this rebirth, Divine Mashlands might be feeling this most of all. Okay. I'm also getting the energy of travel with this car here. Um, it doesn't have to be physical travel, but it could be... Um, uh, like it, it doesn't have to be like a trip or anything like that, but I do feel like this is part of their journey. Like they are, are making headway. They're making their way. For some, it could be actually physical travel. Um, but it really just feels like part of the journey, like, like continuing on the journey, traveling, making headway on the journey. Um, it's like getting to their destination, getting to this rebirth energy. All right, Divine Feminine, how are you experiencing this connection? Poverty, yeah, this is what we channeled previously. It's the lack. You're still focused on the external. You're still feeling the lack of this connection. But I do see this shifting. I do really see this changing. Um, 
we have this chimney sweep here and they're bringing me to Mary Poppins, the original, Dick Van Dyke. Um, they're bringing me to, it's like, you know how joyful Bert was in that movie? He was a chimney sweep, right? But he was also creating art. He was singing. He was, you know, drawing, um, uh, oh my God, this is so beautiful. You know, he was even drawing in chalk, you know, for the children and even for himself. And he was creating new worlds, new fantastical worlds. It's like that. It's like, even if you focus on the lack that's what's going to persist. Shift your perspective. Be in that energy of joy and abundance. And that is what you create. You create a new world for yourself. That's this energy here. And I feel like both of you going through this like change. It's not quite a rebirth for the Divine Feminine. She's already been through that. She's been through many. But like recently, she's been through that. But this feels like just a little bit of a tweaking. A little bit of shifting of the energy. A shifting of the perspective. Um, keep focus on the love. Again, focus on choosing the path of love and peace. Keep allowing yourself. It doesn't mean that you deny when things are difficult. It doesn't mean that you um, avoid when things get rough or challenging. That's when you turn to, to others for support. That's when you turn to God for support. That's when you allow yourself to reach out because we are all in this together truly. Um, that's where we support each other. That's where you have your soul family, your regular family, you know, even, you know, your specific person, but if they're capable of it. But it's about recognizing your ability to overcome, and that's what ascension is. Ascension is not denying any aspect of the human experience. Ascension is understanding that you have the tools, the resources, and the capabilities of overcoming to turn and transmute that fear into love. Ascension is understanding your ability to transmute, to heal to remember the truth. Doesn't deny anything. Doesn't bypass anything. Ascension is all about your own recognition of your ability and the resources and the tools to overcome. All right, I wanna get a little bit of tarot. I want to see, I'm getting guided to ask, interestingly enough, what does the Divine Masculine want to communicate to the Divine Feminine? What does the Divine Masculine want to communicate to the Divine Feminine? I feel like I want to do an in-depth reading, um, maybe this week. I, I'll have to see um, what my availability is. But sometime in the near, very near future, I want to do an in-depth reading. Um, so let me know in the comments what questions you have for the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine. Right now I'm getting asked, I'm getting guided to ask, what does the Divine Masculine want to communicate to the Feminine? In the past I had done, what are they surrendering? What are they healing? What are they, you know, clearing? That kind of thing. Um, so if you want those kind of questions, let me know in the comments what what's your burning question for the collective. Because um, I feel like I want to do more of an in-depth channeling as far as the reading between the masculine and the feminine so let me know what questions you have or want to know all right divine masculine what do you want to communicate to your feminine at this time what do you want to communicate to your divine feminine at this time what do you want to communicate to your divine feminine knight of pentacles i'm making my way i'm making my way Interesting. Okay. I'm going to speak about this first. It's funny. We have the squirrel here. And what I'm hearing is like storing it up for winter. Um, you know how like squirrels will store nuts and stuff? I feel like this is what they had done in the past. They had stored everything up and kept it all bottled inside, not expressing it. And like it doesn't work anymore. It just doesn't work. And so they're slowly making their way um, to become much more stable and steady in their communication and what they want to offer. Um, this also has this feeling of consistency and groundedness. This is a lot more sincere than it was in the past. Not wanting to store it all up, not wanting to hold it all back is the energy that I'm getting from this. I feel like um, it's very, it's happening very slowly slowly is you know subjective of course but i feel like it, it's it's like slow and steady it's like that the turtle the tortoise like slow and steady 
when to race, that kind of thing. Um, it's because they are, um, it's because they are ending a cycle here. Um, I'm just getting Excalibur energy from this. There's a lot of magic energy that's coming through to help heal. Um, what I'm actually hearing is something really beautiful and interesting. I feel like masculine energy, energetic masculine energy is coming in to help heal the divine masculine in their unconscious wounded state. Um, it's, it's like energy from the past. It's like King Arthur and Merlin and Jesus and Osiris. It's like masculine energy really stepping forward to help. Now, this could also be playing a part in their physical world where they're maybe having support groups, uh, especially with conscious men. Um, you know, maybe they are taking courses or classes to understand the conscious masculine or to understand self-development or wherever those holes are to help them understand themselves and, and help them grow and expand and heal. Um, now, this is not, um, let me be very, very clear. This is not learning from the unconscious, patriarchal crap of the past. This is not that. This is learning from other conscious men, um, learning with each other. Just like Divine Feminines, throughout your journey, you've met your soul sisters. I feel like these Divine Masculines are beginning to meet their soul brothers. Um, and, and it doesn't have to even be meeting in person. It could be, you know, reading essays or blog posts or whatever, um, listening to podcasts. It could be taking courses, whatever this is, reading books. But it's, it's under, it's self-development, it's spiritual development, which is really one and the same, they're saying. Um, but it's it's their soul brothers, people who they really divinely connect with. Divine Feminines, you've done this as well. In your community, you have met soul sisters. Um, you also, you know, might have those that you look up to as spiritual leaders or, you know, Divine Feminine leaders that you admire. It's the same kind of energy. I feel like the Divine Masculine is in that energy and that's helping to heal them, especially as they end a very painful cycle. And I'm hearing it's where they betrayed themselves. They're acknowledging where they betrayed themselves. And that's why it's taking a little bit of time to come forward towards you, Divine Feminines, because there's a lot of self-forgiveness, again, that's coming through here. Um, with the Page of Swords and the Nine of Cups here, I feel like they are... Uh, it's almost like they're starting a new beginning in their own personal fulfillment. Beginning to, before, it's like before they have the Ten of Cups, they have to find that happiness and that fulfillment within themselves. And that's taking them getting really honest with themselves. That's taking them getting really, um, communicative and expressive within themselves. I feel like there's still a little bit of defensive energy there, um, but they're opening up to that more and more. Let me get a little bit more for the Divine Masculine here. Tell me more about the Page of Swords and the Nine of Cups. Tell me more about the Page of Swords and the Nine of Cups. Yeah, it's taking some time. Taking some time. Seven of Pentacles here, but they're opening up to it. They've planted those seeds. They're opening up to it. And it by them planting those seeds and becoming more communicative, expressive, and um, intimate with themselves, vulnerable with themselves, letting down that guard, you see how just like fierce he is and tense he is the more he lets down that guard and just opens up to this just joyful and love the more that wheel is going to turn forward but the wheel is already turning because he's already planted those seeds he's already starting so it's the Kali Ma energy that's coming in for the Divine Masculine, interestingly enough, because we've been channeling Kuan Yin. And what I had said in the previous reading was, it's almost like Kali Ma was here for us in the past year, but she's taken a step back and Kuan Yin is coming forward. But I was actually seeing them holding hands um, as like, you know, uh, doing this in partnership together. Like Kali and Kuan Yin are like, yeah, we've been helping you together. We've been, you know, as, as, Endings are occurring, new beginnings are happening at the same time. You have to destroy the old, Kelly's saying, in order to create the new. But Kuan Yin is actually assisting that with compassion and forgiveness and mercy and, and grace and love. Um, so they're, they're, they're actually doing this together. Kuan Yin is going to be stepping to the forefront. Callie's going to be taking more of a step back because she was really here to guide a lot of that destruction in the past. Um, this past year or so, but that destruction was because it was just like we've channeled for the Divine Masculine. Um, it was just an unstable foundation. 
it just could not be sustained. It was not healthy. It was an old way of being. It was an old way of loving. It was an old foundation. And so that tower had to crumble in order for the new foundation of love to be built. And so that is the energy of Kali, just completely loving, but also very fierce. And uh, it's, it's the word, it's not... They're going to be the word unforgiving, but it's not unforgiving as in lack of forgiveness. It's like just fierce, just like, I'm going to push you. I'm going to push you. I'm going to push you. I'm going to challenge you. That's Kali Ma energy. It's, it's fierce, divine warrior, divine mother energy. Um, so she's actually taking a step back and Kuan Yin stepping forward, but Kali's still here. She's still reminding us that endings and beginnings are part of creation and that's what's happening here for the divine masculine there's like an ending and a beginning happening simultaneously that's what they're navigating here let's get for the divine feminine what does the divine feminine want to communicate to her divine masculine it's what they're it's like I just trust that the wheel is turning trust that the wheel is turning divine feminine what do you want to divide or what do you want to communicate to your divine masculine what do you want to express or communicate to your divine masculine? She's saying she's not holding back any longer. Yeah, she's not holding back any longer. She's not holding back herself. She's not holding back from her journey. She's like, I know that my ships are coming in. I can see it. I know where I'm headed. I can feel that peace. I can feel that passion. I can feel that love. She's like, I'm just, gu I'm just being guided towards it. She's like, I'm not waiting and I'm not rushing forward towards anything I'm just allowing I'm just letting it be because I've seen the truth about myself I've seen the clarity about myself I've learned so much from this connection about myself about life about the universe about the world she's like I've learned so much in this partnership and I want to continue to learn I want to continue to expand so I'm not holding myself back it's almost like she's saying please step up whether you are the divine masculine that I've always known you to be or that I've always known in physical embodiment or you are another conscious masculine, step up because I am just allowing it to unfold but I'm not putting my life on hold. I'm not holding back anymore. I'm not holding back who I am. She, This three of pentacles is like she's ready for this partnership. She sees things very clearly right now. Um, correction. She sees herself very clearly. She's still having a little bit of fog around this connection. She's still having a little bit of fog around how this union all unfolds and what that path is laid out for her. She's not able to see that far ahead. That's why she's just allowing it to be. She's like, I feel the energy of this. She's saying, I know it's coming in. But I'm not rushing towards it. I'm not a boat that's going out to meet this great ship. She's like, I just have to be. Doesn't mean I'm sitting back on my laurels. I'm not off in a cottage somewhere just hanging out. She's like, I'm right at the shoreline. I'm right on the precipice. I can feel it. I know it's here. I don't exactly know everything that it looks like. That's still that fogginess. I'm not supposed to. I'm supposed to trust. But I also can see myself very clearly. And I'm not holding myself back from what I want, from what I desire, from what I deserve, from what I can feel is coming in. That's a spiciness. Divine Feminines, anything else? Divine Feminines. Anything else? Anything else for the Divine Feminines? No. Okay, I'm going to get a... to do this i'm gonna get a card for my journey of the heart deck for the divine masculine for the divine feminine all right divine masculine what do you need to know right now the devil yes this is what we're talking about your partner is your divine mirror reflecting your shadow self as an opportunity for soul growth let go of toxic attachments old patterns, mindsets, beliefs, and set yourself free from outdated mindsets about love. Your divine mirror, your divine counterpart, your divine feminine is showing you love. It's showing you where the lack of love is within yourself. That's where you are holding on to outdated templates about love, etc. So allow yourself to, to clear yourself of this devil energy. The devil came through in a reading, in the last reading, um, what was that? Love me like you do. 
I'll link it in the description box, came through that they are releasing that attachment. They're releasing that energy. That's part of what is coming to an end. That double energy is coming to an end. But it's going to take a shift in perspective. It's going to take a shift in belief. It's going to take a shift in mindset, a shift in energy. Divine, I'm going to take the um, this as well because this is that healing energy. This was the bottom of the deck. Um, patience is required at this stage of your journey. You and your partner are transmuting old energy and healing within the sacredness of love for each other. That's what I'm feeling. You guys are transmuting all of this old energy and you're actually healing within the sacredness of the love that you have for each other. You might not be able to see it in the physical yet. Divine feminines, you might see your divine masculine is avoiding you or not expressing himself to you or holding back in some way, but there is love. There is always love that is felt there. That is how connected you both are. Again, you have to, you know, allow yourself to say, hey, this is shitty. I don't want this lack of communication anymore. I don't want this inconsistency, this back and forth. I'm not going to accept that in my life. That's where you are in your power. That's where you express yourself. But the divine machine is going through this healing journey as well. And they are understanding more and more what they're releasing. Just as you've released divine feminine, we're not excusing you either. But Divine Feminine or Divine Masculine is understanding that there is always the energy of love and they're beginning to really become aware of the fact that where there was the mirror, where there was the projection, it was just because they were feeling that lack within themselves. And the more they allow themselves to love themselves and love you and connect deeply to themselves and to God's source, the more they're going to just open up to more and more love. Again, that love just didn't have anywhere to go. As they were growing up in their past, it was so much love and it just didn't have anywhere to go. They might have been the black sheep. They might have had connections that it felt like it was too much or they were not enough or they had worthy issues or whatever it was. But what's coming forth now is the energy of just love. Love now, being able to express that. Divine Feminine. Divine Feminine. What do you need to know? Divine Feminine. Eight of Cups and Seven of Wands. Contrast allows us to see what we don't want as well as what we do. You're shedding an old version of yourself or your connection to move closer to a relationship that is emotionally fulfilling. With the eight, uh, Seven of Wands as well, where there might be opposition to or challenges within your partnership, you're putting in the effort and fighting for your connection. Don't be afraid to stand up for love and defend your heart. And that's actually what I'm getting called to. The magician at the bottom of the deck as well is that energy of you get to create your life. You don't deny your own life. Don't deny what it is that you want. I feel like this connection showed you more of who you weren't in order to step into more of who you were. That's growth and expansion. It's like it was showing you the contrast. It was showing you, hey, I can see now where the holes were. I can see now from where I was triggered, where I needed to love myself more. I can see where I was abandoning myself in connections in the past or even in this relationship. I can see where I was dishonoring myself. I can see where I wasn't allowing myself to speak my truth or embody my truth. And I can see now where that's the only thing I'm going to accept going forward. Um, that's what you fight for. That's what you stand up for. You fight for that kind of love. You don't fight for a connection that feels bad that feels draining of you you fight for the love you fight for yourself and it's not fighting as in you're not in opposition to another it's allowing yourself to to hold that desire in your heart to hold that love in your heart it's like divine feminine i feel like as much as she wants to give up on this connection she's not giving up on love She's not giving up on herself. And it's there that she's not giving up on connection. She's just allowing it. Again, this three of wands, she's allowing it to come in. She's like, I can't see who's on that ship, but I know it's coming in. I know it's coming in. I just had to walk away from the unhealthy aspects. I had to walk away from what wasn't working. I had to work, walk away from the places where I was dishonoring myself in order to walk towards that healthy partnership. That's where I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up on love. Interesting energy here. 
there's this energy of the divine feminine feels a little bit fed up but not in a way of the past she just feels like she's in this place of i feel connection i feel sacredness i feel love and i'm just allowing my heart to be open she feels her divine masculine but again it's that alchemist um book energy it's like that's where the unconditional love is i love you i love you unconditionally but I can also recognize if you're not wanting this, I can, two things can coexist. I can love you and recognize if we're not meant to be together. I can love you and recognize if we are meant to be together. I can love you and recognize that you have a journey as well. I can love you and also not want the connection that we had of the past that felt toxic and unhealthy. I can love you and, I can love you and, Two things can coexist. That is transcending duality. It's not seeing things from black or white. It's walking the middle path. I love you and unconditional love. All right, you guys, that is going to be it. I hope that this was helpful. I'm sending you so much love and so much light, and we will be back when we're back. <laughs> I love you. Bye. Mm -hmm.